Hello, everyone, and good morning. Uh, welcome to today's Kativ Autodesk Virtual Academy session. Uh, I'm Nigel Mbayek, application engineer here at Kativ and part of the Lifeline team. And uh, joined with me today, I've got uh, Grayson Dunneman. So good morning, Grayson. How's it going? Yeah, good morning, Nigel. Hello, Hello everybody. So uh, today, uh, you know, we're going over Plant 3D uh, Project Manager Essentials. And for those of you who don't know what Plant 3D is, we'll kind of go over a little overview of that. Um, as well. It's a vertical of AutoCAD, so it sits on top of AutoCAD, but predominantly uses some AutoCAD functions, and then some more on top of it. Um, the project manager is a really powerful tool, and um, we often see it being underused to its full potential, so we want to make sure you know that everybody gets off on the right foot, and uh, you're using it as intended and to its fullest capabilities, so you know you're not missing out on any of the functions available to you. Um, and Grayson's kind of going to go over a couple of those things, as are, you know, in-house, Plant 3D, PNID, Electrical, Superstar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of the things that I've been kind of noticing and then why I wanted to do this webcast topic was that a lot of the companies I'm going with are using the project manager only as a tool to gain access to some of the functionality that you find inside Plant. You know, you're only really getting into PNID and Plant 3D drawings rather than pulling in maybe other disciplines like electrical, structural, in having those files also inside the project manager. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, going over linked files and pulling in the related files folder. So you get your specifications, cut sheets, you know, some various other topics that, you know, I've seen some people using them. And if you are, feel free to reach out at the end of this. I really appreciate hearing and having you some of the ideas that you guys have had on the way that you structure your projects. But definitely want to make sure that everybody's being able to utilize this as much as possible. Certainly. So. Uh, I think with that, we can go ahead and uh, yeah, get started. Um, if you do have any questions at any time, um, feel free to type them into the chat panel at any time. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, be monitoring those, and we can address them either during the webcast or uh, at the dedicated Q&A at the end. So let's get started. All right. So some of the goals for today, right, is we want to talk about understanding more about the project manager functionality. And we're going to just go over some of the basics. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you have experience with Plant 3D, you're already using these. Uh, these are going to be more for maybe the people that are joining us that don't have that really kind of experience. So we'll talk about some drawing creation, uh, little basic things about folder management. And then I also want to talk about validation. Uh, and then this will be maybe comparing versus Plant 3D models and then PNID functionality. Now, then, then we're going to get into what we're going to call utilizing collaborative tools. And this will be things such as, you know, the work history, and we'll also talk a little bit about the difference between link and copy file, because both of those are present inside Plant 3D, and they both have their separate uses. So let's go ahead and switch over into the Plant 3D environment. What I have right here on the left-hand side of my screen is what we call the project manager. And this is pretty much the lifeblood of the Plant 3D software. If you've taken a class with me, I see people, a few of you that I've had, I spent a good amount of time talking about this just because of how much I like it from working in the field. You know, it keeps me from having to really search around on my Windows Explorer to gain access to a lot of files. It's all inside the software, so I'm minimizing my alt tabs. You know, it's just, it's nice having everything in one spot. Plant 3D comes with three standard folders whenever you make a project. You're going to have PID, Plant 3D drawings, and then also related files. Now, you should tend to keep them organized this way, but this is where we're going to start talking a little bit more about those folder structures and what we can do with these. But as it is out of the box, PNID drawings are going to be using the PNID functionality. You'll have a separate workspace for these. Plant 3D, same exact thing. And then related files will start to encompass everything outside of that box. It's also inside the Plant 3D Manager that we're going to have you know, orthographic drawings for general arrangements, and then we also have our isometric drawings, and this is going to be for our fabrication spool details on all of our piping. Now, when we start breaking these apart, we can start further breaking these down kind of into separate little sections. So for my PNID drawings, we have lube oil, some ammonia, and then my process lines. Underneath Plant 3D, I start adding some folders in here for my equipment, piping, and structural. And then my related files, I'm starting to throw extra folders in here, so I have access to cut sheets. Uh, we'll talk about this electrical folder and maybe pulling in some conduit and panel drawings. And then also have a separate folder for specifications that I might be referencing. So those could be like uh, you have maybe flange details for specific pressure class ratings. Now, 
One thing you're going to start to notice about the, pro uh, the project manager is that this details tab at the bottom will keep track of everything for you. It'll tell you how many drawings are going to be put inside this folder, where this folder is located. Additionally, you'll have uh, template drawings as well. So if we start clicking a couple of these files, you'll see that you know this PNID drawing, where it's being saved to, we have file size, who created it. We'll also have information such as last saved, the last person edited, and if we have any included descriptions. These will all fill out here. And then what we're going to talk about a little bit later on is this work history field. Refresh this. Get that open. There it goes. All right. So, work history. I don't really see many people using this. Um, it's not something that's typically talked about a lot, and I can understand where if you're using vaults, where you might not touch on this as much because this will kind of take the same role. So vault will be more of a data management, and this work history is going to be for people that are looking through these folders. Um, when you go ahead and click on the status button down here, you're going to get different types. So we have you know in progress, forward review, different types of revisions, and then final and archive. Now. What you can also do is use this little Manage tab to start creating your own. So when I, was, when I was in the industry, we have a lot of what are called design reviews, you know, DR1, DR2, DR3, and then we also have a final one, and then shop production review as well. And so for us, you know, we could have a design review tag, do a DR1, and set this, you know, after I was done working on this, hey, you know, so anybody that's taking a look at this file knows that this latest version already passed the design review stage. One of the nice things about that is that anybody that goes ahead and opens up this project is going to be able to see latest status on all the files. You know, they, if you're dealing with managers that are kind of overseeing a bunch of projects at a time, they're not going to want to spend a lot of their energy or, you know, even their own personal time opening up these files to figure out what state that they're in. By using these work histories, you can go ahead and have those directly linked to the files, and then also export this property out to maybe like a title block on the PID or your orthographic drawings. So there's more than just you know having a read-only property. This will start writing to other areas inside of your project. Now, when we get down into like Plant 3D, what I like to recommend to people to do is to separate things by discipline and service. So We'll have you know, some drawings that are specifically for equipment and being laid out in a facility. We'll have a piping drawing that will only have piping inside of it with the other folders XREFed in. I'll always recommend people use XREFs because that way you get latest versions of the files. If somebody modifies anything that's inside the project, you'll know exactly what they're trying to do using the XREF functionality. So once again, if people are using this, Feel free to send in some comments. I'm really curious what you guys are doing with this and see how it kind of lines up with my thoughts. Now, when we get into related files, is kind of where I like to slow down a little bit. This is going to be getting into somewhere where I almost never see anybody using this. Uh, everything's populated inside of PNID and Plant 3D. Later on, we're getting into related files. And, you know, I have a little cut sheet here, so I think this is a relief valve real fast. And this is just a simple image file that we can link to this project. The same thing if maybe we wanted to have an electrical drawing in here, some conduit, and then this little control panel EMX file from electrical. This conduit drawing was generated inside an MEP, so what I'm able to do is pull in conduit panel information directly into my plant project, and then what we're going to do is actually XREF this file into it so we can get a representation. When you're dealing with software or files from an alternative software, what you'll start getting into is link to file and then copy file to project. Uh, if you're dealing with an alternative software, I kind of recommend to use link to file, just because if you use copy to file to project, what's going to end up happening is it doesn't do a direct link, so what you're going to have is a disconnect. You'll have it where, you know, maybe Raymundo is designing out his conduit and panel drawings, and you use copy file to project, so that'll take a copy of his drawing, put it into your actual project file location, rather than grabbing a direct link from that file. So he'll have to remember to go into your project and replace that with the latest version. Using link to file, it's going to grab the exact one he's using. 
So any time that I have to update or he updates that drawing, it will be directly loaded inside my project. One thing to kind of clarify, though, is when you're working inside related folders, you can only create one level of folder structure, meaning when I'm inside of the, the top half, so PNIDs, Plant3Ds, I can keep creating folders and folders and folders. So call this some PRVs, for instance. Then I can break that further down into more types of PRVs. When you're dealing with related files, you can't ever go down more than one level. So, and these are some of my best practices that I like to kind of incorporate into the, the program. Now, if you're dealing inside of like a collaborative environment like this, it's kind of tricky because you're going to have a lot of people talking to all these files at the same time. So, we always kind of like to keep or at least recommend that your project folders are all in the same location rather than trying to spread them out across a server. So, you know, have one shared drive location with all of your projects. Uh, I know some places break it down by user. Once again, if you guys are running into some issues with this, feel free to reach out. I'm really, again, curious to see what you're doing with, with these. So orthographic drawings, you're kind of stuck. Uh, you really can't do much with these. You can do additional folders, so we can do a, let's say do a general arrangement. And already this one, we can go ahead and do a couple more folders. We'll do a you know section view, and then we can do like a general plan. It gives you options to copy drawings to the project, but I don't ever recommend that you do this just because of the way that the orthographic drawing program or this the feature works and how that references specific model files inside of your existing project. So what I want to happen is if you try to copy maybe an orthographic drawing from another Plant 3D project into this one, it's going to be referencing that other file, or sometimes you'll lose that associativity altogether. So this will apply as well for isometric drawings, which are, again, based off of the source files inside this Plant 3D project. So I'm going to hop into this piping real quick. So this is what I'm talking a little bit about. So we have this piping. Um, so we can use this XREF. So I'm going to add a drawing file to this. So let's see, what do we got here? We'll insert this guy. Now, if I ever change this equipment drawing, we'll have an updated version of that. So it's a completely separate file. It's linked in. You're still able to associate all your pipe work to this, but it also clears up your drawings a lot. Yeah, just so you know, you're, you're up to date with the most updated version. If you don't XREF that in, you just insert those um, in there. If I change the diameter of one of those, uh, those tanks, I'm going to be incorrect. Yeah, so you like, it would be kind of, I don't know, if you have a, a structural designer or somebody that's in charge of the facility layout, not necessarily the piping, uh, and they'll be in control of this, maybe this equipment drawing. They'll go in, make their changes, change the diameters of the vessels, do whatever they need to. You'll get a little flag inside your XRF saying that it changed, and then you just reload it, and you'll have the updated version inside of your piping model. So it's, again, just, you know, a little bit of different ways of kind of structuring everything. Uh, some places like to have everything in one drawing file. Completely possible. Uh, I like to break things down a little bit just in case stuff happens. You know, you never know when you get a corrupted drawing file, something gets deleted that you didn't want to, and then you lose all that information. Now, the next part about all this, I, if you guys are using this, let me, let me know, but is these validation utilities. And what this does is it compares a few different parameters and takes a look at your entire plant project. Now, there's a few different options that you can kind of look at as far as maybe what it looks at for PNID objects, 3D piping. Actually, you compare 3D versus your PNID. You know, so that way you can figure out, hey, you know, I'm missing some valves that were on this PNID line that aren't in my project. Which, if you're dealing with some high lead or sorry, low lead projects, uh, very, very fast timetables. Missing something like a hand valve and a pipeline can be pretty show, like a showstopper there. 
I mean, if you're dealing with really tight packages, like on skin-based packaging, you know, it may not have that 12 or 11 inches that you need for that valve. It can completely redesign your project. So by using these 3D to model PNID checks, you'll reference back to the PNID and you just make sure that everything you need is going to be there. Now, the only thing it won't do is it doesn't check for order of valves. So if you have a PNID flowing from left to right with like a ball and then a gate valve, and you have them swapped inside of your 3D model, it won't recognize that. So there does have to be a little bit of a human check there, but it will make sure that the valves are there and they're tagged correctly and that they belong to the right size. You can also see here where that equipment in the 3D model, whether or not it has more or fewer nozzles that it's supposed to be inside of the PNID. Properties are different. Uh, inline items are in different lines entirely. Maybe you have a hand valve like HA101 is on a completely separate ISO from what it was supposed to be. It'll let you know right through here. There's also some stability checks for 3D piping. You know, if you have disconnected ports with drips, you also get into, you know, maybe through projects you use what are called placeholder parts. Uh, so if you don't have certified cut sheets yet, you put in a placeholder PRB. You're not supposed to have any placeholders when you finish a project, so these validations will go ahead and scan through and pick out those placeholder parts for you, just in case you forget about them. Uh, when I was using plant, or before actually that, with Inventor, we would just color our parts red. That was kind of like our check. Uh, when we moved into plant, we got into placeholder components, and this really helps a lot with keeping track to make sure we didn't forget to update something, because once again, you forget to update something, it's when it goes out to production, you can run into a lot of trouble there. PNID objects will get into orphaned annotations. That's great to know. If you have annotations that aren't connected to anything, that, that's not good. Flow direction conflicts, unconnected components, so if you just have pipelines you know, kind of laying around. Non-terminating lines, meaning that they're just dropping off on the page. They aren't going anywhere. So either you're not utilizing off-page connectors or tie-in points. And then we'll also get into spec and size mismatches. So maybe we have a change in the line segment without really putting a reducer or something there. The program will help us out with that and let us know. So you can kind of see right here, you know, my, my equipment, we have some unconnected ports on these different vessels. And then it also gives us details. So you have number of errors, and then we can also go through and ignore these. Now, at any time as you fix some of these, you can go ahead and revalidate these nodes or refresh the entire list itself. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for uh, some a little bit of the collaboration tools that I've seen. Uh, every company is a little bit different. They have a different way of structuring things. And uh, it would be nice to see some more people kind of utilize these tools. So again, if you are structuring your projects this way rather than dumping everything into one file, let me know. I'd like to get on the line with you and kind of talk about it and see maybe some of the pitfalls or areas of concerns. Uh, it's always a good conversation to get to know you guys. Certainly, and thanks, Grayson, for, for some of these tips. Um, I know that it'll certainly help uh, some people having issues maintaining uh, consistency with coworkers and even outside vendors for certain things. Yeah, um, so one more thing kind of on that. If you're utilizing template projects, try and you're using maybe a folder structure that always exists, maybe something like this, equipment, piping, structural, things that you see consistently. Uh, that's another topic I kind of want to talk about is getting those template projects associated so that they already have those folders in there. So that way, you know, copy settings from an existing project will pull in that entire folder structure so you don't have to create it each time. You know, spending that little upfront effort to get those templates done is going to help out a lot in the long run. So, and then you make sure you don't miss any any folders that you might need. Yeah, to exactly. Now it won't copy files, but it'll do all the folder structures and the settings. Right. So if you if you're doing similar things over and over again, but not necessarily using um, the same components or drawings, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Yep. So we've got a couple of questions here. Um, first, is is the project manager manager a full replacement for something like a vault, or is it something it works together in? Um, I wouldn't say project manager will ever be a full replacement from Vault because it's not like a, I wouldn't say it's really a data management tool. So you're not going to have, you know, hit like a history of the files. You won't be able to lock them out from other people using them. Right. But, I mean, there is some stuff in here that will tell you if other people are using those folders or files. 
so last edited and then who created it and who has it open at that time. So there is a little bit of kind of, it's a little half and half right there. Right. Whereas something like a vault will maintain version history, mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to lock certain people from accessing certain files or even yeah, you know it's... check out files so no one else can work on it while yeah. you also have like life cycle projects and everything like that. All that fun stuff in vault, you know, gets a little, uh, little crazy there. So um, in regards to uh, Another question here. So PNID versus plant, um, does this same project manager exist on the PNID side of AutoCAD, or is this only inside of the plant 3D version? No, so PNID and plant, regardless of which version of the software that it have, has a project manager. Uh, it's a required part of this, like the program to run, so it's definitely there for the PNID as well. Just part of that interface. Um, if anyone else has any more questions, go ahead and feel free to type them into the, uh, the address bar. Or not the address bar. <laughs> we're not in the we're not in the web browser. But uh, go ahead and type them into the chat bar, and we can get those taken care of. Looks like a couple are coming in right now. Um, this one comes from Raul. Uh, how can you connect PNIDs with our three D models, um, and how can we make sure our validation settings are working? So something like okay. Inventor or so, SolidWorks. Yeah, that's a good question. Now. When you're dealing inside the Plant 3D environment, what you'll have in your, if you utilize the PNID inside of this is this PNID line list utility. Now what this does, we'll go ahead and look at anything inside of your PNIDs, and you can directly pull off the lines in any associated valves. So you can see, for instance, line 101 is a 10-inch carbon steel 300. It looks like it's a general process. And we've got running off of nozzle M3 on tank 101, and we're going to gate valve HA101. Right here alone, this is where you're going to start your link. It'll also link over things such as equipment. And then your validation, there, I wouldn't necessarily say there's any settings to take a look at. You know, it's going to just pull in that information. So let me just go up to the plant, to my validation. Nope, no new errors detected. All it does is it takes a look at any of these fields and is going to pull that information. So if you're not concerned, or you don't want to see maybe your disconnected ports, you just uncheck these and then run that validation. So that's how you're going to pick and choose what's going to be pulled into that report. Good to go there. Um, another one is from uh, Chris. Where can I find this recording if I need to reference this later? Um, like with all the rest of our webcasts, uh, all the recordings can be found on our YouTube channel. Um, if there's, you know, if it's something completely unrelated to, to Plant 3D, say maybe you have an inventor question or something as well, um, or, you know, just general AutoCAD, you can check our YouTube channel as well. Um, perhaps your question gets answered in another one of our webcasts or one of our short tip and trick videos. Um, Grayson made a couple of those, mm -hmm. so um, that's all there for your reference. Um, I'd be curious to know, uh, I know there's a survey question at the end of this um, as to whether or not you're using things like plant and PNID in your workflow. Um, it would be interesting if you could certainly uh, fill that out once you get to the survey at the end of the webcast. That would be great. It would just be great to know that what people are using this for um, and who's using it at what capacity. It would be really interesting to, to find out. And then, you know, if you need to reach out to, to Grayston, who's like our in-house plant 3D guy, um, I'm sure Gray is more than happy to have a phone call with anybody yeah, regarding great. the workflows and stuff. Um, I think that's it for questions for now. I'll give everyone another 15 to 20 seconds or so um, to type in questions. While we're doing that, Grayson, if you want to just jump back into the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. So, you know, again, took a look at maybe how to utilize some of these project manager tools. And then we also talked a lot about maybe the best practices and way to organize some of these and, and kind of start to fully dive into what project manager will be able to do for your organization. Uh, so through our Q&A, weekly updates. So next Kativ ABA is going to be on 3D printing with Fusion 360. I'm not sure if many people on this webcast will be interested in that, but it's definitely coming up. Now, there was a new hotfix release for Plant 3D 2017. Uh, and that was because of an issue with the F keys and the program freezing. So if you ever have that, go ahead and get that hotfix downloaded. Also, make sure you're checking the App Exchange for new content packs that'll work with the catalog browser. There was another one that was just released for Vitalock uh, Pharmacy Fittings. Awesome, awesome content pack. Really filled in a lot of holes for the customers that I've worked with re recently. 
And there's also a, so if you're kind of new or maybe looking into Plant 3D or P90D for the first time, there is a promotion as far as translating your perpetual into subscription. I believe it's 30% off for three years. So that's definitely an option you guys may want to take into consideration. Yep, so uh, if you, you know, if that is something that um, will help you, certainly send us an email or, um, or a message via uh, any, any of our outlets, actually, there's, there's a couple of them, or just reach out to us via phone. Um, another last minute thing that I'd just like to, uh, to note, um, we are starting a brand new series of webcasts. Um, so we do have our Autodesk Virtual Academy, and I guess you can say we're adding, quote unquote, another channel to our online web presence. Um, and that is Kativ's Fusion Fridays. Um, so that's for Fusion 360 specifically. I don't know how many people are on this call um, are interested in something like a Fusion 360, which is uh, one of Autodesk's solutions for um, CAD and CAM, um, as well as things like 3D printing, like we're going to go over next week. Um, we are doing a dedicated series on webcasts for that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send the, uh, the link to the sign-up page here in the chat box. So everyone, you must have received this probably in your chat box on your screen. Um, go ahead and copy and paste this URL into any web browser and uh, feel free to sign up from there. Again, I'd like to thank Grayson for being here today. Um, I'd like to thank all of the, the attendees for being here. If it, isn't, um, if it wasn't for you guys attending every week, um, it wouldn't be possible for us to give you this great content. So uh, yeah, thanks for being here every week in and out. Um, if it, even for things like Plant 3D that aren't used often as things like Inventor are, um, it's great to see that we have a community of users for that as well. So certainly again, you saw some familiar names. For sure, yeah, and there are certainly some familiar names. I know, Grayson, you've taught a lot of uh, the people here in the, the actual attendee list, which is kind of cool. So continual users, that's, that's great to hear. Um, so with that, I'll, uh, I'll leave you all for this week, and uh, thanks for coming out. We'll see you next week for Fusion, for, or for Fusion 360 3D printing, um, yes. and maybe in the future for Fusion Fridays specifically. Yes. So thanks, everybody, for being here, and uh, we're off. Adios.